How you doing? I'm Mr. Clifford. It's ACDC Econ. We're talking about a key concept that you absolutely have to know. It's called foreign exchange. In this video, I'm going to explain the idea of supply and demand for different currencies, right? And then I'm going to talk about the shifters. In the next video, what I want you to do is I want you to practice, okay? Figuring out which country's currency appreciates and which one depreciates. Right now, we've got two different currencies, right? This is not products. This is currencies, right? Supply and demand for dollars, supply and demand for Canadian dollars. All right, so U.S. dollars, Canadian dollars. Over here, we got to figure out what's the price of an American dollar. Well, it's how many Canadian dollars you get for each U.S. dollar. And so it's always the other currency over the currency that you're analyzing, right? We're looking at U.S. dollars. This is the quantity of U.S. dollars. Well, it's good old-fashioned demand and supply. That gets the exchange rate. The exchange rate is how many Canadian dollars you get for each American dollar. And let's say to start off, let's say it's a one-to-one -one relationship. You get one Canadian dollar for one U.S. dollar. And there's obviously some sort of quantity out here available for people to exchange their currencies. On the other side, we're going to analyze the Canadian dollar. So up here, it's going to be the U.S. dollar divided by the Canadian dollar. The value of the Canadian dollar is how many U.S. dollars you get for it. Down here is the quantity of Canadian dollars available in the foreign exchange market. Here's the demand, here's the supply, exchange rate, what's going to be? One to one relationship. That's the idea. Okay, now before we go any further, we have to figure out who is demanding and who is supplying. When we're analyzing dollars, who is the ones that demanding United States dollars? Don't say Americans, right? Americans don't demand our dollars, we're supplying them, right? The demand is determined by Canadians, right? Who's supplying? Well, we're supplying is by the US. You got to keep that straight because that's going to help you out later on. Now, over here, who demands Canadian dollars in the foreign exchange? Well, Americans. This is by Americans. And Canadians are the ones who are supplying. Now, before we shift this thing, let's talk about the four things that will shift it, right? The four shifters of foreign exchange. All right, here they are. The first one is tastes and preferences. Another one is price level or inflation. The next one is going to be income. The last one is interest rates. And that's what we're going to use for this example, okay? Let's focus on interest rates. Let's say that in the United States, right, the interest rate is 15%, right? And in Canada, the interest rate is 2%. So let's think about what are Canadians and Americans going to do. The Canadians are going to take their dollars, convert them into American dollars, and then turn around and buy American bonds and get that 15% return, right? The demand is going to increase for American dollars. Why? Well, because Canadians want more of them, right? If the Canadians want these, they've got to supply their Canadian dollars, right? They've got to go to the foreign exchange and supply those. And so when they supply them, that leads to an increase in supply of Canadian dollars, and that ends up being a new location, right? Here and here. Let's say the situation of being two to one. What does this have to be? It has to be one to two, right? What's happening in the United States dollar? Did it appreciate or depreciate? Well, it appreciated. Appreciation is when the currency gets stronger, or now you get two Canadian dollars for each one American dollar. So the United States dollar appreciated relative to the Canadian dollar. What happened to the Canadian dollar? Well, it depreciated. Now you need two Canadian dollars to get one American dollar, right? Now I'm going to give you a rule here. Right? Demand and supply always increase or decrease together. Right? If one country wants another country's currency, they've got to supply more of their currency to do it. Quick bonus round. Okay, that's one way to analyze it. Remember what I told you was that Canadians are going to want more American dollars because they want to get that higher interest rate. They want to get that return of 15% compared to 2% they get in their own country. There's also something else going on here. Right? Normally, the United States would turn around and go buy, like Americans would buy a certain number of Canadian assets. But when we have a higher interest rate, are they going to do that anymore? The answer is no. And so what also would happen in this situation is the demand would fall for Canadian dollars, right? The Americans would prefer not to have Canadian dollars. They'd rather have American dollars because they'd get a higher interest rate. The United States is demanding less Canadian dollars, then they would be supplying less U.S. dollars in the foreign exchange. Right now you're thinking like, whoa, whoa, which one is it? Well, it depends on what the question's asking. If the question asks you, well, what happens to the demand when the interest rate's higher in the United States? Well, demand would go up. Well, what would happen to supply? Well, supply would go down. The point is, no matter how you draw this thing, the United States dollar is definitely going to appreciate. No matter what happens, Canadian dollar is definitely going to depreciate. Okay, hopefully this makes sense. Now it's time to practice, okay? Good luck.
Until next time.